Imagine a world where cure isn't just, you know, a hope for HIV, but it's actually the reality. For decades, that's been the goal, right? The big prize. But we've mostly had lifelong treatment, this constant vigilance against the virus that just won't leave. But what if the key wasn't some huge discovery, but something uh, much smaller, a, a tiny change in the virus itself? Today, we're diving deep into some really groundbreaking research. It's coming out of the University of Virginia Health System. Science Daily picked it up around May 30th, 2025. And it really feels like a big step to get scientists closer, tantalizingly close to ways to, you know, actually eliminate HIV, moving beyond just suppressing it. Absolutely. And our mission today really is to unpack these new findings for you. We want to help you understand how these small kind of overlooked variations in the virus could completely change how we approach treatment down the line. We'll explore why this isn't just another study, but why it's so significant, especially if you're curious about where medical science is heading. OK, but before we jump into the new stuff, we should definitely acknowledge how far we've come. I mean, HIV treatment, it's been an incredible journey, hasn't it? Oh, completely. A medical revolution, really. Yeah. These antiretroviral drugs, they've turned things around. What was often a death sentence is now, well, manageable. They can push the virus down to undetectable levels. People feel better. Symptoms mostly gone. And crucially, they can't transmit it. It's a huge success. It truly is transformative. Decades of work paying off. But, and this is the big, but... Despite these amazing drugs, we still have this core problem. HIV doesn't actually disappear. Even when tests say undetectable, the virus is still there, hiding deep in the body in this uh, dormant state. Latent, we call it. It's like it's sleeping. Dr. Patrick Jiskson, one of the researchers here, put it perfectly. HIV treatment is life-saving, but also lifelong. And that lifelong part, well, that's what we're still trying to crack. That really hits home. Life-saving, but lifelong. Okay, let's unpack that. The stealth mode, this latency, what does it actually mean for someone living with HIV day to day? If the drugs are working so well on the active virus, why is this hidden pool such a big deal for finding a cure? Well, it's basically the virus playing biological hide and seek. It's incredibly clever. See, in this latent state, the virus isn't actively copying itself. Right. So the antiretroviral drugs, which mostly target that replication process, they just can't see it. They can't touch it. And what's more, it also hides pretty effectively from the body's own immune system. Ah, okay, so double evasion. Exactly, which makes flushing it out incredibly difficult. It's genuinely one of the biggest hurdles to a cure. Mm. If someone stops taking their medication, even for a bit, these latent viruses can wake up, reactivate. They start spreading again. Precisely. Mm. The infection comes roaring back. That's why treatment has to be lifelong right now. That hidden reservoir is the key to its persistence. Wow. So it's not just hidden, it's like a master of disguise, always one step ahead. It feels like scientists have been chasing this ghost for years. But now, this UVA team, they think they've found a crack in that disguise, a kind of internal switch. This is where it gets really interesting, right? They've found a key reason why it's so hard to cure, looking at these tiny variations in a system called the Reverari axis. That's right. And what's so fascinating is how these subtle differences, these tiny variations in Reverari, directly affect two really crucial things. First, how well the virus actually makes copies of itself. And second, how easily it wakes up from being latent. Dr. Marie-Louise Hammers-Jold at UVA, she clarified something important. She said scientists often thought of this axis like a simple on-off switch. You know, virus is either making copies or it's not. Yeah, it makes sense. But their new work shows it's actually uh, more like a rheostat. Think of a dimmer switch for a light. A dimmer switch. Yeah. Okay, that's a great analogy. So if it's a rheostat, not just on off, what does that mean for how the virus behaves? It sounds much more complex than just active or inactive. It's exactly that complexity that changes things. A dimmer switch, you know, it gives you a whole range of brightness, not just full on or full off. Right. So some regions of this Reverari system, they basically turn the dimmer way up. The virus is more aggressive, replicates faster, wakes up from latency easier. But other versions, they keep that dimmer switch turned down low. The virus is less active, much harder to bring out of hiding makes it incredibly stubborn. So some are just naturally harder to shock out of latency. Precisely. Dr. David Rikosh, another lead researcher, was very clear. This study links it directly to how well the virus can replicate and reactivate. This built-in variability, this dimmer switch effect, it's a huge insight into why HIV is so persistent. That dimmer switch idea really helps. But, okay, this variability sounds tricky. To really get why this Reverie axis is so central, could you maybe walk us through the basics? How does HIV actually replicate and where does RevRE fit in? Just a quick refresher. Sure, happy to. So think about the infected cell. 
For HIV to make new virus particles, it first needs to get its genetic instructions, its RNA blueprint, out of the cell's nucleus. Okay, the nucleus is like the control center. Exactly. The RNA needs to get from the control center out into the main factory floor, the cytoplasm, where new viruses are assembled. And this export process, it's tightly controlled by the system we're talking about, the REVR-RE axis. There's a viral protein called REV, and there's a specific bit on the viral RNA itself called the RRE, the REV response element. Got it. REV basically acts like a shuttle. It binds to the RRE on the RNA and escorts it out of the nucleus. Without that happening properly, the virus can't really build new copies effectively. And the UVA team figured out that small changes there in that shuttle system have these big effects. It's not just a minor detail. Exactly right. That's the core insight. Even tiny subtle changes in how well REV binds to RRE or how efficiently that whole system works directly impacts the virus's ability to replicate and to emerge from latency. They specifically found that viruses they engineered to have low REV activity, well, they were at a disadvantage, both in making copies and in waking up from latency. So like having a really slow shuttle system for those blueprints. Precisely. Things grind to a halt or at least slow way down. And this variability across the different viruses hiding in the body is critical. It helps explain why treatment struggles to clear everything. It's not fighting one uniform enemy. It's fighting versions with different dimmer settings, some set very, very low. Okay, okay, this is starting to make a lot of sense. So what does this mean for actually finding a cure? You hear about strategies like shock and kill, mm -hmm. where they try to wake up the latent virus so drugs or the immune system can eliminate it. If this Rev RRE thing is a dimmer switch, not just on off, well, it explains why shock and kill might be struggling, right? They're trying to flip a switch. But for some viruses, that switch is barely budging because it's turned down so low. You've nailed it. That's the crucial implication. Dr. Gottfried Jabuho, another key author, pointed out that REV, even though it's absolutely essential for the virus to replicate, it's often been sort of overlooked when thinking about latency. Really? Why? Well, the focus was often just on getting the virus to start making any RNA, kind of the initial on signal. But Dr. Jabuho highlights the problem. If a bunch of the hidden virus has naturally low REVR reactivity, it's going to be inherently resistant to being woken up by current methods. Our shock isn't strong enough, or maybe it's not the right kind of shock, for those viruses with the dimmer turned way down. So the strategy needs to shift. It's not just about shocking everything blindly. We need something smarter. Yeah. What's the proposed path forward then? How do we use this REVR insight? This opens up a really exciting new possibility. Instead of just trying to wake the virus up, the idea is to actively enhance the rev -E axis itself. Ah, uh, so instead of just shocking it, you okay. sort of help it wake itself up more effectively, turn up its own dimmer switch. Exactly. If we can find ways to boost the function of REV or the interaction between REV and RRE, we might be able to trigger a much stronger, more complete latency reversal across all the hidden virus, even the stubborn ones. How would you even do that? New drugs? Potentially, yes. Developing new drugs that target this axis maybe make REV work better, or perhaps even more advanced things like gene editing approaches down the line to modify the virus's own dimmer switch setting in the reservoir. The ultimate goal is to get closer to strategies that can actually clear the virus, really eradicate it, not just keep suppressing it forever. It's a shift towards active elimination. That sounds incredibly promising, a real paradigm shift. And, you know, it's powerful to think about the personal motivation behind this. You mentioned Dr. Javuho. He's from South Africa where HIV impacts millions, over 8 million people. His drive isn't just scientific curiosity, it's about finding real solutions, smarter strategies to finally eliminate it. That human element, that dedication, it's really inspiring. So let's bring it back for you, our listener. The big takeaway here is pretty fundamental. Thinking about HIV's REV RRE system, not as a simple light switch, but as this variable dimmer, this rheostat, it really changes the game for cure research. It's not just a technical detail. It reframes how we understand why HIV persists and, importantly, how we might finally beat it. Absolutely. This understanding moves us beyond just managing the virus. It gives us a much clearer, more sophisticated plan for how to actually flush out those hidden reservoirs that have been so tough to crack. It offers, I think, real tangible hope for developing therapies that could lead to a true lasting cure. And maybe this leaves you with a final thought to chew on. If HIV's stubbornness is linked to these subtle variable mechanisms, these biological dimmer switches, well, what other complex diseases might be hiding their secrets in similar ways?
Think about conditions like cancer, maybe some autoimmune diseases. Could they also have these nuanced controls we're just starting to understand? How might this shift in perspective, looking for the rheostats instead of just the on-off switches, push medical research forward in other areas too? Something to think about. Thank you.